Welcome to the new lecture of the Real Analysis 1 course. Please check the description of this video to find the links to the previous video, next video and the entire playlist of this course. Here we have a theorem. The first part of the theorem is if a1, a2, etc. am are each countable sets, then the union a1 union, a2 union, a3 union, etc. union am is countable. Second part of the theorem is if a n is a countable set for each n element of capital N, then union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n is countable. So in the first part, you have to show that if each of a1, a2, etc, a m are countable, then the union of these sets a1 union, a2 union, etc union, a m is countable. In the second part, you have to show that if a n is a countable set for each n, then you have to show that the infinite union, union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n is countable. First, we shall look at the proof of the first part. We prove this by the method of induction. For this, first we shall prove that a1 union a2 is countable. For this, we define the set b2 is equal to a2 minus a1, which is defined as a set of all x element of a2, such that x not element of a1. This means that from the set a2, you will be removing all the elements common to both a2 and a1. So here, a1 union b2 will be same as a1 union a2 and a1 intersection b2 will be phi because b2 is defined by eliminating all the elements common to a1 and a2 from a2. So a1 intersection b2 will be phi. We have to show that a1 union a2 is countable. As a1 union a2 equal to a1 union b2, it is sufficient to prove that a1 union b2 is countable. We prove this as three cases. We first take the case where b2 is empty. Then we take the case where b2 is finite. Then we take the case where b2 is infinite. Now since a1 is countable, we know that there exists a function f from n to a1 which is 1 1 and on 2. Now let us take the first case where b2 is phi. When b2 is equal to phi, a1 union a2 will be a1 union phi and a1 union phi is a1. So we got that a1 union a2 equal to a1 which is countable. We have shown that a1 union a2 is countable when b2 is equal to phi that means b2 is empty. Now we shall assume that b2 is finite. So let b2 is equal to set b1 b2 etc bm which has m elements. Now we have to show that a1 union b2 is countable. For that we have to show that there exists a 1 1 on 2 function from n to a1 union b2. Now we define the function h from n to a1 union b2 as h of n is equal to bn if n is less than or equal to m and f of n minus m if n greater than m. Now look at the function h of n carefully. If this n varies from 1 to m, then the value of h n will be b n. That means h of 1 will be b1, h of 2 will be b2, etc. h of m will be b m. Then if n is greater than m, that means h of m plus 1 will be f of m plus 1 minus m. That means f of 1. h of m plus 2 will be f of 2, h of m plus 3 will be f of 3 and so on. Now we know that this function f is 1 1 and on 2. Now since f is 1 1 and on 2 and h of n is equal to f of n minus m except for a finite values here also for each different value of n you get different values of bn. After n is equal to m h of n will be same as f of n minus m. Since we have that the function f is a 1 1 and on 2, we can conclude that h is also 1 1 and on 2. That means the function h from n to a, a1 union b2 is 1 1 and on 2. This means that a1 union b2 is countable. As a1 union b2 is the same as a1 union a2, we can say that a1 union a2 is countable.
Now we shall see the next case where B2 is infinite. If B2 is infinite and since B2 is contained in A2 by the definition of B2, B2 is a subset of or B2 is contained in A2. Since B2 is contained in A2 and A2 is countable by the theorem discussed earlier, it follows that B2 is countable. Now since B2 is countable, there exists a 1 1 onto function from n to b2 and we call that 1 1 onto function as g. So g is a 1 1 onto function from n to b2 which is countable. Now we have to show that a1 union b2 is countable. For that we define a function h from n to a1 union b2 by h of n is equal to f of n plus 1 by 2 if n is odd and h of n is equal to g of n by 2 if n is even. That means h of 1 will be f of 1 plus 1 by 2. That means f of 1. h of 2 will be g of 2 by 2. That means g of 1. h of 3 will be f of 2. h of 4 will be g of 2. f of 5 will be f of 3. h of 6 will be g of 3 and so on. Here we have seen that h of 1 is f of 1. h of 2 is g of 1 h of 3 is f of 2, h of 4 is g of 2, h of 5 is f of 3, h of 6 is g of 3 and so on. Now since f and g are 1, 1 and on 2, it follows that h is also 1, 1 and on 2 by the definition of h. So we got that the function h from n to a1 union b2 is 1, 1 and on 2. This means that the set A1 union B2 is countable. As A1 union B2 equal to A1 union A2, we conclude that A1 union A2 is countable. So whatever be B2, whether it is empty, finite or infinite, we have shown that A1 union B2, which is the same as A1 union A2 is countable. So from here we can conclude that a1 union a2 is always countable whenever a1 and a2 are countable. Now we will assume that a1 union a2 union etc union am is countable. We take this union of m sets a1 union a2 union etc union am to be cm. Now we have to show that a1 union a2 union etc union am union am plus 1 is countable. For this, we can write a1 union a2 union etc union am union am plus 1 as a1 union a2 union etc union am union am plus 1. Now we know that this is cm. So we replace a1 union a2 union etc union am by cm. So this is equal to cm union am plus 1. Now we know that cm is countable by our assumption and am plus 1 is also countable. And this being the union of two countable sets, we can conclude that CM union AM plus 1 is countable. That means this union of M plus 1 sets A1 union A2 union etc. union AM union AM plus 1 is countable. And this completes the proof of the first part. Now the second part is if AN is a countable set for each n element of capital N, then union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n is countable. To prove this, we first assume that each of the a n is disjoint. We have to show that the infinite union, union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n is countable. For this, we have to show that there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between the set of natural numbers n and the set union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n. Now to prove this one to one correspondence between the set n and union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n, we first label the elements in each a n as a n is equal to set a n1, a n2, a n3 etc. That means the elements in a1 we write it as set a11, a12, a13 etc. The elements in a2 we write it as set a21, a22, a23 etc. The elements in the set a3 we write it as set a31, a32, a33 etc. 
Now we will arrange the elements of the set of natural numbers n as below. So first here we have written 1, then 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, then 7, 8, 9, 10, then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The next will be 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 like that. Now we will arrange the elements of union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n in a similar way. First the elements of a1, then the elements of a2, then the elements of a3, then the elements of a4, then the elements of a5 and so on. Now with this arrangement we will find a correspondence here. 1 corresponds to a11. Then a21 and a12, 2 corresponds to a21, 3 corresponds to a12. Then the next a31, a22, a13. So 4 corresponds to a31, 5 corresponds to a22, 6 corresponds to a13, so on. So this correspondence establishes a 1 1 onto mapping G from the set of natural numbers to union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n where g n g of n corresponds to the element a j k where j k is the position or location of n in the arrangement for n this means here g of 3 is a 1 2 this 1 2 represents the position of 3 in arrangement of n g of 7 is a 4 1 now 4 1 represents the position of 7 in the arrangement that means it is in the fourth row first column this is a fourth row and first column so this arrangement establishes a one to one correspondence between n and union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n and this shows that union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n is countable. Now we shall consider the case where a n are not disjoint. If the sets a n are not disjoint then the mapping given above that means g from n to union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n. This mapping or this function may not be 1 1 because the elements in the different a n's might not be different if the sets a n's are not disjoint. In this case we will replace a n with b n where b n is defined as b n is equal to a n minus the set a1 union a2 union etc a n minus 1. That means b2 is defined as a2 minus a1 b3 is defined as a3 minus a1 union a2 b4 is defined as a4 minus a1 union a2 union a3 and so on. Here you can see that each bn will be disjoint and union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n will be same as a1 union union n is equal to 2 to infinity bn. Now since all the sets here are disjoint we can use the previous argument in the case where uh, all the a n's were disjoint to show that there exists a one to one correspondence between n and this set a1 union union n is equal to 2 to infinity b n. And now as this set is same as union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n we can say that there exists a one to one correspondence between the set n of natural numbers and union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n. Thus we can say that union n is equal to 1 to infinity a n is countable and this completes the proof.